Well, hello everybody. Tash Forrest suggested that I do some online food tutorials uh, while we're here, all self-isolating, etc. and got time on our hands. So I thought I would do bread, which is food number one. And we're going to do a lovely bloomer loaf, a classic English white bloomer loaf. And so what we need, straight off, strong white bread flour. This is Cars, it's very good. I use Wessex Mill, I use a whole different range of flours. Sometimes I use Italian blue caputo flour, which they use to make the pizzas. So straight in on the scales, 500 grams. Uh, the way this works is that you follow the science and the temperatures and the measures and it will come out just fine. So here we go, 99. 500 grams of bread flour. Zero the scales. 11 grams of salt. Just plain old table salt. 11 grams. Tried and tested recipe, there we go, 11. Shake the bowl about, mix up the salt and the flour. Just wash the whisk around in it like so. Right, now then, water at 45 degrees, uh, anything hotter than 60 degrees and you'll kill the yeast. Now the yeast that I like to use is fresh yeast. Any supermarket with an in-store bakery will have fresh yeast for sale. You simply have to ask them at the counter. Here's the stuff that most people use. It's fast action, dried yeast, there it is. One teaspoon of that will come in at about seven grams. So if you've got the dried yeast, seven grams of that. What I like is the fresh yeast. So we'll have a look at a little lump of that. There you go. 200 grams of this stuff, this whole bag, is about 60 pence. So it's great value. Look at that, there we go. Smells amazing. And what I like to do, whack the water. Now the water is 325 millilitres or 325 grams. Grams and millilitres are interchangeable. When you get into that American cups system, it's very confusing, but grams are grams all around the world. So 320 millilitres of warm water. And what I do is I just crumble the yeast in, zero the scales, and it's about double for dried yeast for fresh yeast. So I'm going to put 15 grams of fresh yeast, like so. There we go, that was exactly 15 grams. Very nice. Let's get that out of the way. And then just get the water moving at the top, spin it around and dissolve the yeast into the water. So the five ingredients, flour, water, yeast, salt, oil. So there's your yeast and your water. There is your flour and your salt. The final thing is the oil. You can use sunflower oil, regular vegetable oil, olive oil, or I like, uh, just because of the flavor, I like uh, extra virgin olive oil. So we'll plop a little bit in the proving bowl, just a little bit, teaspoon maybe. And then a couple of tablespoons. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do a no knead method, which will be easier for all you people who might think that it's a bit difficult kneading or you might not get your technique right. Actually, the gluten will develop just with the hydration, so um, you don't have to worry about kneading too much. So, two tablespoons of olive oil one, two, there we go. That's extra virgin olive oil. Now come on in, hun. Huh? Adding the water and yeast into the flour and just scrunch it around. There we go. Whirl it around and let the flour take up the water. 
it's quite sticky. Do you remember when we were kids of my generation, we used to have a glue that was flour and water paste. Flour and water on its own is a very sticky situation. Now, different flours have different hydrations. They will either take up the water. So you may not need all the water. And if it goes a little bit sticky, you grab a little bit of extra flour. Every batch of flour is different, so you have to kind of play it by, by feel. But eventually, you will be able to take up all the flour from the edge of the bowl, pretty much. There it goes. And just give it a minute or two for the water to get right into the dough. Okay, that's good, we'll plop that. What I like to do is to get the water in the bowl. If you leave it, the flour will dry on and it will kind of go to concrete. So, uh, just leave that there. Right, here we go. Get your hand, smudge out the oil, plop the flour down. And all we want to do is just combine the water and the flour. It's a very sticky old thing. I like to use a pallet knife to just quickly... There we go, get that off my fingers. And then I'm going to show you a little technique, which is a kind of a fold and a roll. And all we're doing is we're just waiting for the water to get right into the flour. What do they call it? Hydration. Okay, that's good. Right, so push it down, roll it, turn it, roll it this way, like so. Stretch it a bit that way, roll it that way. Good, lovely. And you probably won't actually use all the oil. But all you want to do, you just want to get the water into the flour. Like so. Right, now then, here's the trick. No kneading. I'm going to sit that there. I'm going to sit that there for three minutes. So three minutes from now. Boom. See in three minutes time. I'm not going to touch it. Okay, right. Three minutes have passed. Now this is the magic of no need. Scrape your dough up, turn it over, pull and fold it into the middle, turn it, pull and stretch, turn it, pull and stretch, turn it and look already at that transformation. Yeah, look at it, look at the smoothness already occurring and you just pull it and turn it, pull it, turn it, pull it and turn it like that. Just for about 30 seconds or so, no more. Yep. Pop it down and get it ready for another 30 seconds. Now look at the transformation already from that lumpy mass. Right. See you in another three minutes. Okay, we're coming up for the second period of three minutes. And uh, I used to bash it and stretch it and roll it and fold it and knead it, just like, you know, you see everyone else do. But this is just as effective, but a lot easier. Pull and stretch. And look at the smoothness already of that dough. It's unbelievably elastic. Very high protein content for uh, strong bread flour, 13 to 15 grams of protein per 100 grams. Look at that, it's absolutely silky smooth just from a little bit of folding and pulling and stretching. Right, the final three minutes. Look at that already, beautiful. Okay, coming up to our third lot of three minutes. So it's essentially nine minutes of sitting around uh, and one minute of stretching and turning, right. This is the bowl I'm going to prove it in. Teaspoon of olive oil in here. And I'm just going to 
grease the edges with the olive oil all around the inside of the bowl like so okay and this is our final oh look at that it is silky silky smooth here we go pull that's it and you're just stretching it pulling it back in on itself like this and there we go look at that it is like satin beautiful right now then this goes into the bowl like so <clears throat> cling film over and I like to do it drum tight as I call it into the bowl very nice how do we know it's drum tight there you go we're now going to sit and let that prove and that can be anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half sometimes two hours depends how long I want to leave it don't let it over prove because it'll get too much air in it and it'll kind of lose its structure when you come to do the knockback but we'll get to that point when we get to that point. But in the meantime, I'm going to go and put that in the warm studio where it's going to prove and I'll come back in an hour or so and see how we're getting on. Okay, two hours later, how about that then? Here we go. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, fermented, fermenting away. And then uh, what I'm going to use is this you can this is French bread flour in a sprinkler creates a nice even coat onto the surface and this process is known as the knockback where we're going to knock back the air so as you'll notice it's now night time and the Sun has disappeared this won't always happen when you're making bread sometimes the Sun will still be there but uh, Ah, it's almost alcoholic. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, full of air. Nice ferment, couple of hours. You needn't do it for that long, but I like to. And now, little technique, because we oiled the bowl, you only need a little bit of oil. But it will now start to fall away from the bowl. Give it a little helping hand. There we go. Beautiful. And there. See? There we go. You can see all the air holes in there. Pop your hands into the flour. We're just going to knock air back, fold a third, fold the other third up, over and punch it down and you can hear all the air popping out. Beautiful, really, really beautiful, yeah you can hear all the air there it goes, popping away. Otherwise you'll end up with great big air holes in your bread, which for Italian breads, like for caccia and ciabatta especially, nice big air holes is kind of what you're looking for. But in a classic English boomer, it's not really what you're looking for. Right, knock all the air out, fold the corners in, Fold it over and roll it up towards you. And what you will have is a seam on the bottom, which we keep on the bottom. And we just roll and tuck the edges in 
and you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like that. Now onto a baking tray. This is baking parchment, proper baking paper. It's not grease proof paper. Grease proof paper, it will stick. You need proper baking parchment. If you don't have it, a little light oiling will prevent from sticking, or if you've got a really good non-stick tray, it will probably not stick. So, here we go. This is the second proof. S straight up, straight down. There we go, nice linear shape onto the baking parchment. In fact, there's a little air bubble there that I shall pop. There we go. Beautiful. And what we do now is we will leave this under cover and just let it sit under there for as long as it takes to get your oven up to 220 centigrade. And then we shall come back and I'll show you the final preparation and how to slash the loaf so that it blooms and we'll get it into the oven and you can watch the magic as we get the final loaf out. So, okie dokie, it's been about 40 minutes. Ooh, and there we go, that's pretty much doubled in size. Just gone for its second prove. Right, the final thing we need to do is before we get it into the oven, here's some pre-boiled water and in the oven there is a tray that I'm going to pour the water onto to make steam which will provide us with a lovely lovely crust right if you don't have a spray thing just dab it with some water and then Dust it down with a bit of flour to give it that old rustic look. In fact, what I normally do is I get a little bit of flour like so, and then poof it down on one side, and then the other, and then the slashes. At an angle, make sure your knife is really sharp. One, two, three, four. And now, straight into the oven at 220 degrees. Into the tray with the water. Straight in at 220. Boom. After 10 minutes, I will turn it around because no oven bakes evenly. And then after another 10 minutes, I will turn it round, drop the temperature to about 180, uh, do it for five minutes, spin it round again for five minutes, and then out, let it cool, and then it will be ready to go. So we'll come back when I spin it round in 10 minutes time, which is in about 10 minutes time. Okie dokie, see the continuity? No penny. Right, 10 minutes have gone by. Spin it round and look at that already puffed up, beautiful. 10 minutes, 10 minutes on that side. Looking marvellous. Then we'll spin it around, drop the temperature and give it five minutes each side. Okay, so it's had 10 minutes. We turned it around. We've given it another 10 minutes, so that's 20 minutes all in. Careful of the app and bomb of steam. Spin it around. Five minutes. And then after five minutes, we will turn it around, give it another five minutes, and then out it comes and it will be ready. So, uh, one more spin around. I, on, I only do this because no oven bakes evenly. So if you want 
a perfectly evenly baked loaf, you have to open it and spin it round. And don't worry, it doesn't ruin the bread. It's not a cake where, or a souffle where it will sink as soon as you open the oven. Uh, after 10 minutes, the bread is quite robust and it, it will have risen and done its thing. So don't worry about opening the oven and spinning it round. Okay. Mind the atom bomb. Spin it around. Five more minutes. So half an hour all in. Ten minutes, turn it. Ten minutes, turn it. Five minutes, turn it. Five minutes, out. Okay, here we are. Moment of truth. Oven off. Door open. Mind the atom bomb of steam. Voila. There you go. That is it. Your classic English bloomer. It's really rather good, huh? The smell coming off here, incidentally. Oh, God, it's fantastic. Now, as this cools down, it will shrink ever so slightly, and you will get these famous little cracks and crusts that appear as it shrinks down. And then uh, tomorrow morning, we'll pop it open and have a look at the crumb. But I can tell you right now that, uh, yeah, it sounds lovely and hollow and beautiful, aerated. There you go, an English bloomer. Okay, now that the bread has cooled down, you can see these beautiful cracks that appear and the beautiful crusty texture once it's shrunk and it's all crunchy and crispy and got these lovely cracks appeared on the top and so there you go there it is there's your bloomer and good luck everyone who tries one well hello well the sun's back so uh, this is the moment of truth That's the kind of sound you're looking for. Oh, beautiful, soft, soft, spongy. You know it's good bread. You press it in and it pings straight back. See that? There you go. Beautiful stuff. <sighs> Smells gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And there you go, the bloomer. Once you start making these, you will never ever go back. It would be very difficult to have shop bought stuff. So as long as you've got flour, yeast, water, salt and oil, you can have that all the time. And there you go.